praises to the most high. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's uh, begin all of it uh, with, uh, at least we cannot start without um, going back to what happened a couple of weeks ago uh, with a two-hour, you know, kind of conversation and discussion we have on the network about the, the, the philosophy of Israel United on the network. Now, tell me, what kind of feedback have you been receiving from listeners uh, since that time? Well, I got several uh, callers from uh, from Ghana who mm. visited the school. He just happened to be in New York. So he came by the school that we have in the Bronx, and uh, he was very happy uh, having listened to it. Uh, so he decided to come by all praises, and uh, we've got quite a bit of emails, quite a bit of emails from Ghana with people asking questions and things of that nature. What were, the, what were some of the messages, I mean, around, if you can put an average to maybe the interest areas, people from your target group of listeners or audience, what area were they so interested in asking their questions, if I may ask? Well, the, the area that they were interested in asking, pretty much, was the white image of Jesus. <laughs> that is always the biggie right there. Because many people believe that Jesus Christ is a Caucasian man. They believe the same man that destroyed their country, destroyed their people, is the Savior. So, when, it, when we drop this understanding that that's the devil the Bible speaks of, they could not believe it. So they had many questions and they wanted to hear for themselves. Right. Now, uh, quite interesting. Um, a lot of... Uh Interest, interesting questions you've received, and then I've also been pushed with a couple of them. Like, uh, people still think that what do you think about the school of thought that thinks that uh, your philosophy of religion, your philosophy of religion, for which reason you were pushed to come out with uh, Israel United in Christ, is as a result of the black history subjection to inhuman attitudes during the days gone by. And uh, you're coming in to indoctrinate something that you believe will be kind of a retaliation towards the white race. How would you react to some of these people? Well, there's a little bit of truth in it. Well, for example, all religions, when, when, upon reading the Bible, you realize that when Moses went to the mountain to speak with God, God never said, be a Baptist, be a Seventh-day Adventist, be a Catholic. He never said that. He gave Moses laws, statutes, and commandments. And that is what he gave us. But for some reason, you have all these religions. So you sit back and say, where did it come from? And the Most High tells you in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, in verse 8, he tells you to beware of the philosophies of man. You know, I'm going to read, if you will, let me read the scripture, Colossians 2 and 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the rudiments of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So it is man, in particular, the so-called white man, is the one that set up the Christian religions of today. They are not based on Bible prophecy. They are not based upon the 12 tribes of Israel at all. You understand? So he has set these things up and has divided the people, and he has uh, destroyed many nations and countries with his philosophies. All right. You understand? Okay. Right. So, interest. I know we're going to have to expand, I mean, I, I try to bring up more understanding up to this one, because I've received about... These ones are calls. People who call me, well, they want to believe in what you are saying, but then it still kind of uh, complicates their thinking in terms of having to have a straight thinking about the philosophy we're bringing in, into the world. Now, let's move up to some kind of another interesting area of the discussion. There was this thing that has to come up in terms of you say that the black man is a true Israel, right? And in terms of that, do you are you going to accept the white race in your church? <laughs> well, you have to go to the scriptures for that. The first thing we have to understand is un, uh, ex, 
the Bible mentions all races, all nations in the Bible. You have to identify the white race in the Bible. The term white is not in the Bible. White man you will not find in the Bible. So that is the first mistake people make. You have to identify him. What race is he? Now, the answer is, when you go to Genesis, Genesis chapter 25 and verse 25, let me read it for you. Uh, this is when uh, Isaac and Rebekah were having twins, fraternal twins. It says, and the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. The first of these fraternal twins that was born was called Esau. He was red. Why? Because the blood showed forth through his skin. He was not of the brown complexion from the time of Adam, like when it says in Genesis 2, verse 7, let us make man of the dust of the earth. Esau was totally different. He came out red, the Bible says. You understand? Right. Then it tells you, let me jump up ahead now. Watch this. Bear with me. I want all your listeners to listen very good about Esau. Who is Esau and what does God say about him? Malachi chapter 1, verse 4 says, whereas Edom saith, now Edom is the biblical name for the race that came from Esau, whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places, thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them, meaning call Esau, Edom, the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord has indignation forever. So God has indignation against the children of Esau forever. That's why when you go to the New Testament, the Apostle Paul reminded the Israelites in Romans 9, verse 13. It says, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. You understand that? So God hates this particular race of people. That's not my feelings, you understand? Because me, I could say, oh, I love love everyone. But God says, I hate them. You understand? So, so you, you I want to base, base, do, I, base, do I believe what God says, or do I believe what democracy says? Do I believe what Christianity says? I have to decide who do I serve. Just like your listeners must decide who do you serve, the one true God or democracy. Don't you think that democracy liberalized the black segregation in America? Democracy is of the devil. Let me explain. (laughs) Democracy and Christianity are the same. They they go hand in hand. One has a political twist, one has a religious twist. But it's all about ancient Babylon. Remember in ancient Babylon, with all nations coming together under the Tower of Babel, and God confounded the languages. Remember that? Yeah. America is called, in the Bible, Babylon the Great, where you have all races here, all religions here, okay, but we are the children of Israel on the bottom. We are subjected to humiliation and oppression, just like amongst all the other nations. So, democracy says, the uh, Constitution, for example, it says freedom of religion, freedom of speech. That Those laws were not applied to us until when? The Civil Rights Movement. In the 60s. Democracy, Christianity had nothing for our people. It was not until the 60s that we got a little freedom to say what we want to say, worship as we want to worship, and that's when the Lord allowed us to come. Because of what I'm saying now, if I had taught this during the 50s, the time of Jim Crow, I would be murdered. I would be killed. Now, are you taking your inspiration oh, from Martin Luther King? Bishop. Yes. Is your, are you taking your inspiration from Martin Luther King? No. Martin Luther King was, let me read the scripture to you. Martin Luther King was used, but his message was not the message of God. Remember, his idol, Martin Luther King's idol was Mahatma Gandhi. Okay, Mahatma Gandhi. Now, his dream of all uh, nations coming together is found, watch this, watch this. What is his famous speech? Do you remember his famous speech? No, I might make a mistake. I I can't even paraphrase it. So if you know it, just go over there. I have a dream. (laughs) All right, I have a dream. One day, white boys and black boys would be hand-to-hand joined in all that. Watch this in Jeremiah 23 
in verse 25. I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. So God warns us about dreaming prophets. Martin Luther King's dream was based in the American idea of joining with Caucasian man, being able to sit in his restaurants, being able to work hand in hand with him and marry his women. That's what his dream was, but that is not God's dream. God commands us to come out from among them and be separate, like it says in Revelation 18, 4, 2 Corinthians uh, 6, verse 17. He says, be separate from them. So that's what we must do. All right. Now, we've got about five minutes to wrap up, but let me just come on with this one. Um, we are sending uh, messages of inv invitation to some uh, posters in Ghana, and maybe some of them are logged on now and are listening. What would be your brief message to them? Um, okay. We are sending invitations to them. The message to your pastors is this. Repent as the children of Israel. Come out of those false religions. Come learn the truth. And teach your congregations correctly. That's the message. You cannot teach Jesus Christ as white because it is not biblical. Okay? It is the image of the beast, according to Revelation 13. They have to stop teaching lies if they want salvation. All right. There's um, hope for your ministers in Ghana, just like there's hope for our ministers, black ministers here in America. But if they, if God, if they're, if God is their, if money, if money is their God, they will die. What is the end of the tunnel like for IUIC? What is the what? I'm sorry? I mean, what's going to be the tunnel, the end of the tunnel of your dream, of what you have... Uh, uh, I don't have on. a dream. <laughs> I have the word of God. And the end of the tunnel is salvation. Nuclear destruction and salvation for the 12 tribes of Israel. That is what is at the end of the tunnel. And rulership, world domination under Christ. Wow. On the 27th of November, on a Friday, we are going to have another yes. powerful two-hour, this time, not going to be just an easy debate, but it's going to be a discussion here, including okay. some invited pastors we're going to have in the studio. And possibly, I'm hoping to have a member of the IUIC right here in the studio to observe and, of course, participate in that discussion. And I know it's going to be one of the world's most you know, powerful speeches that uh, and ideas that will be poured on this one first time on uh, Ghanaian radio right here. Now tell us um, a little bit. Of, I, I I can I can envisage something that is going to happen. Indeed, it has to be tough, and I know it's going to be really explosive. Now tell us how that. What do you expect to happen on that day by way of your message? I expect people to really examine the false churches that they're in and come out. That is what will happen because I will provide scriptural evidence and archaeological proof of what I am saying according to the scriptures. It will not be empty rhetoric like Christians have done for these 400 years here in America. It won't be like that anymore. You will have proof beyond proof and scripture upon scripture. All right. Up. Finally, once again, as usual, when our time is up, we would like you to leave us with something people can contact you with ahead of the, you know, uh, the 27th day of November. So leave us with your contact, how people can get in touch with you, and ask all the questions they wish to. Yes, sir. The, my email, well, my website is www.israelunite.org. My phone number is 718-303-9655. Or my email is israelunite at yahoo.com. You can get me there. All right. Go over with your well, telephone your again. To write me or call me. Go, go over with your telephone number again. I'll, I'll be very grateful for that. Okay. The yeah. phone number is 718-303-9655. All right. But, uh, it's been nice talking to you right here on the, on the 15 minute preview. Uh, Bishop Nathaniel, that's the head of the IUIC. That's Israel United in Christ. It's always been pleasurable talking to you on GAP Radio. Well, we hope to hear from you same time probably next week. Yes, sir. When I come out to Africa, I want to see you face to face. <laughs> I hope to be here. <laughs> ah, yeah, I'll be great, grateful to also have you right here.